Hi, Paul Coker here from One Bloody Drop. Today I'm going to be talking about how to get from couch to 5k with diabetes. So there's a lot of people out there that are promoting couch to 5k. How does that happen if you have diabetes? Well, essentially you have to follow the same program that everybody else has to follow. But there's a few extra steps. I'm not going to go into the details of how you actually go out and run. I think there's plenty of good material out there on how you do that. But really the essential part here is you have to do everything that everybody else does. But you also have to train your diabetes. And I'm talking about this in terms of training your diabetes because that's really what you have to do. You're going to have to make special modifications to your diet and to your training program to accommodate your diabetes. And you're going to have to train your diabetes in the same way that you train your body. What do I mean? Well, if you've never run before, when you go out and do your first run, whether you've got diabetes or not, it's a challenge. It's going to hurt. And if you have diabetes, it's going to hurt your diabetes. What that means is your blood glucose level is probably going to suffer. You're probably going to find that on the first few runs that you do, you go hypo, your blood glucose level is going to go low. That's to be expected. You need to be aware of it. You need to be aware that it's going to happen. You need to be testing your blood glucose level often and regularly whilst you're running. That means you have to stop and you have to test your blood glucose level. On your first few runs, you're going to welcome that. As you, your running improves, you're going to find that frustrating. You've still got to do it. You've still got to learn to deal with it. If you're using a, a continuous glucose monitor or a flash Libra, that makes life simpler because you can see the trend that you're going in. But if you've never run before, I recommend that after 10 minutes, stop and test your blood glucose levels. Now, if you've never run before and you're running for 10 minutes, congratulations, well done, you're doing amazing. Most people, when they first start running, won't manage 10 minutes of running. And I don't expect you to. I remember my very first run, I went out and I ran one circuit of a local lake. It was 400 meters all the way around. I thought I was going to die. I then walked a circuit of the lake before I ran a second circuit of the lake and I thought, that's me, I'm done. I can't manage more than that. That was my first run. My second run, I went out and did exactly the same. I didn't make any improvement. It wasn't until I did my third and my fourth run that I actually added an extra circuit of the lake. And after I was able to actually go around that lake for four circuits, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to crack this. So I, I was running one circuit, walking one, running one, walking one, running one, walking one. And I gradually built it up until I was doing about five or six circuits of the lake. And then I, would, I, I was able to then run two circuits of the lake and run uh, uh, and walk one, run two circuits of the lake and walk one. And eventually I was able to actually start joining it up. So I was doing three circuits and four circuits and, and got to the point where I wasn't walking at all. Now, what was happening in my blood glucose levels was that even on that run one, walk one, my blood glucose level was just dropping massively. So how did I deal with that? Well, I soon realized that I needed to take extra carbohydrate on board before I ran, and I needed less insulin. So what I found I was doing was that the meal before I was, I was eating, before I was going out to run, I would have that perhaps two hours before I go out to run. And I'll take less insulin for that meal. And very quickly I realized that as my distances were increasing, I needed to make other modifications as well. And I'll talk about those in the next video. But you must make changes to your diabetes management in order to be able to run. It's a guarantee. The other thing that you need to be aware of is you've got to be very aware of your heart rate. If you've never run before, even a slow run will put your heart rate up really quite high. So your heart rate while you're running needs to be at such a level that you can actually hold a conversation with somebody. If, they were, if you were running with somebody, you need to be able to have a conversation. And it's not going to be like the conversation I'm having with you now, but perhaps it's got to be like, hey, how are you? What kind of a day are you having? And short pauses between the sentences is fine, but if you're at a stage where you're, ah, I'd like to be able to talk to you, but I really can't because I'm out of breath. Your heart rate's too high. Now, the reason that I'm talking about heart rate being too high is that the higher the, your heart rate goes, 
the faster you will burn glucose. And if you have type 1 diabetes or you have type 2 diabetes and you're using insulin, you really don't want that. You want to preserve your glucose levels as much as possible. So if by running at a slower pace, you have a lower heart rate. And that means that your body's ability to burn fat is mixed with your body's ability to burn glucose about 50-50. And that's exactly where you need to be. Now you can do it by working with working out with somebody and going for a run with them or you can do it by buying a heart rate monitor and going through the uh, technicalities of the heart rate monitor and working out what your heart rate zone is and working in your aerobic zone. Now the, the simple rule of thumb is if you're talking with somebody you're in your aerobic zone but if you want to get more technical buy a watch with a heart rate monitor on it you haven't got to buy a an Apple watch you haven't got to buy a watch for a hundred pounds you can go down the road and buy one for 20 30 pounds perhaps but my, my advice would be get one that has a heart rate strap rather than one that's measuring your heart rate from your wrist because they're more accurate um, catch me on the next video where I'm going to be talking in much more detail about how I actually go out and run and I'm going to be talking about half marathon, but if, you, if this is you for the first time running a, a 5k, the same rules will apply. See you on the next one.